Hey folks, Dan Freo here with your rate update report for September 28th, 2023. So you, if you're seeing on the screen, these are the top six products people use when they're buying or refinancing a house. And no, you don't have to wipe off your screen. It's not smudged. Yes, the interest rate over there is 7.65 on the 30 year fixed. But I wanna come in today and give you the context of what really is going on behind this. Because a lot of people are saying, okay, rates are gonna hit 8% or maybe 9% or where are they going? What I wanna give you guys is at least the understanding understanding of why is this taking place? So the first thing you have to do is understand the bond market. So the bond market is basically right here. We watch 10 year treasuries. That's a bond, a government issued bond. And then we have right up through here, MBSs. That is a mortgage bond that trades on Wall Street. Okay. The dynamics behind this is if there are more buyers in this market, like any other commodity, if, if, for example, like stocks, if a stock is exciting and you think it's a good investment, people jump in and buy, 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 buy. And what happens to the price of that product or price of that stock, it goes up. Well, the same thing happens with bonds. So over the past few years, the federal government has stepped in and they were buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries in the tune of over $4 billion a month. So that basically said, we have tons of buyers in this market. So when you have a ton of buyers, like I stated in stocks, it drives up the price. Okay. So what happens in bonds that you're seeing right through here is the price of a bond goes up, which well, yield comes down. So back in the pandemic days, when we had interest rates about two, two and a half percent on a 30 year fixed, what was happening is, like I said, the Federal Reserve was dumping, just buying gobs of this, this product, mortgage backed securities and bonds. Okay, so they stopped buying. So that said, okay, we don't have as many buyers in this. So the prices of this started to stagnate. Now what the federal government is doing and the Federal Reserve is doing, they're selling these bonds. They're selling them in the open market. Well, not a lot of people were wanting these bonds in the first place today anyways, but now we have excess selling. So what happens when you have too much of something out there? Well, it drives down the price and it drives up the yields when it comes to bonds. Let me explain this and let me show you exactly what's happening. So the first thing we want to see is here's what the Federal Reserve did back when the pandemic hit. Remember back in a late 2019 and early 2020, uh, the federal government had, or the Federal Reserve, I take that back, had three points, whatever that is, $3.8 trillion in debt on their balance sheets. Well, what did they do? Well, they raised it and they kept buying. Remember, they're buying mortgage-backed securities and bonds. They kept buying and buying and buying and buying up to this point right here, okay? So again, they're buying all this stuff, causing the prices to go up and yields to come down. What they're doing now is they're starting to reduce their, their buying. Well, they're not buying anymore. They're actually selling. Okay, how much are they selling? Well, right through here. Starting in June, the Federal Reserve started selling $47.5 billion a month worth of these assets. Okay, that happened in June. In July, they kept that balance the same. They were, they were selling off $47 billion a month in these securities. August, it said the same, the same thing. Now, here's what happened. All of a sudden, they, started, they doubled that production, and now they're selling $97 billion worth of bonds back in the open market. What that's called, and you're, you're going to hear this a lot in the next couple weeks and months, is quantitative tightening. So when the, when the government or the Federal Reserve is buying these bonds, it's quantitative easing because their goal is to drive down rates. Well, now they're quantitative tightening, meaning they're selling these bonds and that's what's causing the prices to plummet and yields to skyrocket. So this is where they are right now. And this is one of the biggest factors along with the government shutdown and oil prices and a lot of other things behind what is going on in today's market. So the first thing we wanna look at for today's dynamics is let's look at the economic calendar that we have, but let's first see what the markets are doing. So the markets are on pins and needles right now because why? The stock market's futures edge up as traders digest the jobs data and the GDP report. Okay, then you go over to the next thing is Speaker McCarthy criticizes the Senate measures on the House will get a, a, a bill done today or tomorrow. It has to be done in the next 24 hours so that it, we can avoid a government shutdown. So those are the big headlines that you're gonna see in the news right now. But let's get over to the economic calendar to let's see how robust the economy truly is. Because remember guys, the Federal Reserve wants the economy to really slow down. So let's look, just look at the data that we have just today to see if that re the reports for today is helpful helping the matter or hurting the matter. So the first thing you want to see is here is GDP uh, quarter over quarter. Uh, it is basically came in as expected. The previous reading was 2%. 
analysts were expecting to come in at 2.1%, and it came in at 2.1%. Now, here's basically the bad news. But unfortunately, bad news in today's market is kind of good news to a point when it comes to the Federal Reserve. Because again, I want to reiterate, the Federal Reserve wants the markets to cool. They wanted really housing to cool in the jobs market, and they're doing a fantastic job at that. So we also look at initial jobless claims. Remember, the, the government or the Federal Reserve wants more and more people not working because if you don't have the money, you're not working, you're not getting money, you can't spend and buy stuff. Okay, so what we see on here is the initial jobless claims. Last reading was 202,000 people filed for the first time claims. They were expecting that to spike up to 215. Well, it didn't spike all the way up to 215. It went to 204, but at least it's bad news. It's badder than, if that's a good word, it's worse than we were previously, but it's not as a big, a big adjustment as the Federal Reserve maybe was hoping for. And now here's the big piece, pending home sales. Home sales are dropping off a cliff. And a lot of people are saying, okay, home sales, you know, they're way down, but, you know, prices are going to uh, plummet and everything else. And they also, a lot of people are saying there, it's a forest that we don't have any supply in the market. Well, that isn't a forest. And hopefully you watch my videos on a daily basis because I explain that usually a lot of times throughout the week. So that's another thing that we're going to look at. Uh, and then we have the rest of the day, we have the federal chairman Powell. He's coming out and speaking. And then we'll have a federal balance sheet. Uh, we're going to go over that. I'll go over that and review that with you guys tomorrow. So with all this data coming out, you know, let's go back and look at where mortgage rates are. So these are where mortgage rates ended yesterday. These are the top six products people use when they're buying or refinancing a house. So if you want to find out what exactly you would qualify for, if you're looking to purchase a home in this market, or maybe your first investment property, or maybe you guys are out there thinking, okay, I have a ton of equity in my house and my household is really tightening our, up our belt because we have a lot of bills and within inflation, things are more expensive. We have a lot of pent up equity in our house. How can we have access to that? We'd love to help you with that. We'd, help, we'd love to help you get pre-qualified for a house, maybe even for your first investment property. How can you reach out to us for, get, for, for some guidance on that? Please visit us at therateupdate.com. And there's three ways to get in touch with us. The first way is you can click the button right over there. There's an apply now button. What it's going to do, it's something unique. It's not going to actually take you to an application system. It's actually going to ask you a few questions so we can analyze those questions and your data from there and assign you to a specialist on our team that helps people in exactly your situation. But if you're out there and you're like, hey, Dan, how can I get a hold of you guys right now? I want to talk to somebody or at least just email somebody. Well, just go to the bottom of our website and you're going to see that right here. You can give us a call at 844-775-5626 or you can email me directly at dan at the rateupdate.com.